the player's fit. I'm still working on their fitness. So I actually took a gamble on doing a 25 minute warm up last Sunday below in Casement Park. And what happened when I did a 25 minute warm up where I was working in the realms of aerobic and aerobic fitness still, what happened was he saw for the first 10 minutes of the game I actually thought to myself maybe I had gambled wrong because Antrim were looked a bit flat. We were small but flat. Wexford took off. But what I was doing at the moment, I'm in a period at the moment where I'm in conditioning. So my conditioning period still is reflected before my games. Okay? So what will happen now when I come to, say, the month of May and we start playing in the championship is what I'll do is I'll have a more streamlined warm-up. It'll be down to about 12 minutes max. Okay? 12 minutes on the field. And what I'm just looking for in that is, I'm looking for, I will always maintain a warm-up. A warm-up is term warm up one word. No, 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 no. A warm up is actually broken down like this. What you should have is you should have your skill based prep. Okay, you're in the dressing room before the game like that, so the coach is there and he's, yahoo, giving it all, go and go, right? We're in here this morning. And what happens when the players run out in the pitch? They run out in the pitch and the first thing everyone forgets to do is forgets to get them happy with their environment where they are. They come out, if they're lucky to be the county players on a big day, they fly out, the crowd is shouting, and all of a sudden they're off, and you watch, they go straight into drills straight away. And what happens is you stand back and you watch what they're doing, and you see nothing but mistakes. Because players are nervous, players are not happy with where they've come out onto. So what you might have seen over the years, when I've been involved with Cork and involved with Edward, when we come out in the pitch, I always like to have two players, no less, I know there's football coaches here, two, two less come to pitch together a lot, and all they're doing is... I like to get two players always working together. You know, nice and casual for about two minutes, you know, working the ball just together. And what they're doing is if a fellow wants to stay, he can have a stop and he will look around just to see where he is. Get, get, get himself set up, yeah? So that's the first, that might be two minutes of a warm up, just allocated there. The next part now is what we call down south, and someone said to me, well, well, this is one time, is that psychological prep? No, that's, you pronounce that physiological prep. No, physiological prep or mobility is when you actually start to do a bit of running, maybe without the ball or with the ball or whatever. That's the second section there that's just in there. And for example, when, 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 none, when none of us had cars, I remember in the, in the 70s, right, when I was a young fella growing up, we had bicycles, and I remember, like, my mother didn't drop me to training, but I think most of the coaches in here this morning, he, he fixed your training on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, the father drops the kids in, the mother drops the kids in. You never very, or you very rarely ever see a couple of the lads now coming across a couple of other people's back gardens, climbing over walls, you know, do, taking shortcuts to come to training, right? Um, that's why we mean, there's, there's guys in here now are wondering what is what it's all about. What I'm talking about here is very, very easy things. The ability to get up on this table, walk across it, get down here like that, right? Yeah? You go into a match, is it going to be just you and me running straight lines all day, is it? No. no. It's all about movement, left, right, where you plant your feet, how you turn, you know? See players doing, say, you know, be able to do a, a, a catapult, you know, where they put their hands on and be able to move their body over. Total body movement, agility levels. That's what this is all about, physiologically prepped. And that's one of the biggest components that's lacking in the game today, is the ability to be able to turn yourself off centers. The ability to, I'm looking around the room at all the men in the room today, and I'm watching how we stand, right? You stay as you are now, right? Go move. Now, if I stood alongside this guy in a match, right? Watch this now, right? Right at that. See the way you're falling? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> right? All the young kids that come in to you from 12 years old, they should all be taught. Stand as you are, don't move. If I stood outside this gentleman all right, we're together, just stand inside there. And all I did was this stuff. You're gonna fall. Reason being is this. Teach your kids, teach your young guys to stand like this. Toe, heel, shoulder. See that dog? Come over, you're thinking now, push me. If I stand like this, just give me a push now. I can't, I can't control my own body weight, yeah? But if I stand like that, now push me now. Can't move me. Because I'm in the ready position like any player should be. I'm also in the ready position to do what? 
Ball's coming to drive. If you're standing like that, you've got to do that to do that. If you teach a kid to do that, he can do that and he's coming first off the, to the ball. What you get with an awful lot of people is when they're in games, just throw the ball down. They go back to go forward. Get, you see what they do? An awful lot of lads when they're young, train motor skills to teach someone, you get them young. You get them young and you try to teach proper motor skills, which is their ability to have proper foot placement and to be able to make movements. What you find with an awful lot of guys, say, in the age of 31 to 35, 40 now, is if you watch them in hurling matches or football games, when they see the ball or when they're anticipating the ball coming from a distance, if their predominant drive foot, the drive foot for, to run, is their right foot, what they do is they put it back to go forward, which means they're losing a step. The key in this the coaching that I've been doing has been to teach the player to work off the predominant foot, which is that my, my drive foot is my left, so I always step out. Do you get me? See that? Instead of stepping back with my right to get my left to drive, what I've done is I've taught myself how to do that. I need to prepare for falling two or three with cart four. We spent hours working on it, and I mean hours. The ladders in particular are a great job, the training ladders. That's what, that's what they really teach, is they teach foot placement into the ladder, they teach you a forward movement. No one ever wins anything going backwards first to go forward. Then you can also talk about coming off a of woody there, when you're running your opponent and the opponent is dragging you. You can also use your opponent to leverage you forward, to use him, his ballistic movement to push you forward. You know, that's a very technical thing now that you can get involved in. But like you can use your opponent to get there first by working on them. <coughs> Everyone goes out and they get caught up in following the player or doing movements slow. But you can actually use your opponent to work to your advantage. It all depends on the positioning of you on your, on your, on your, on your player. But I would, I would say this if you, this morning's going to be very short, it's very concentrated. You're not going to get a lot out your legs off me. Because we ain't got time to do it. But what I'm trying to say here is while I have you in the room, is when you see your players standing like that, they're a weak athlete, they're a weak hurler, they're a weak footballer. And if you get 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, and they're standing like that, correct their stance straight away. Get them into the proper stance where they're, they're in the ready position all the time. I'm doing it below all the time with my own players at the moment, with the Antrim, with the senior hurling team. I'm continuously active, reinforcing that. Because once you're in that position with a hurl in the hand of that, or one in the right hand, you can step off and you're gone. You're on a good movement straight away. Yeah. What we do then, and I break down my warm up always, that you have then in the middle, after those first two areas where you have, first of all, your skill base where you're just getting settled into the environment and you're getting comfortable, yeah? Then you have your physiological prep. What I try to do then is I try to do some sort of spill based mo movement then straight away. So that could be straight line drills, trees working, you know, it's woody behind. So I run out, like, at a turn around, the ball is back to wood, holding it over night. Like, I go back in. You know, you see all the drills. Football hurling, all the drills are very, very similar, so they are. Skill base. You know, and then you have a bit of flexibility. Now, the theory has been like that. The flexibility before a game should be dynamic. Like, if you're fast enough to get to come to a club first and maybe do a bit of static stretching, well and good. But they always say just in the run-up to a game that you should... Have your, your stretching should be dynamic. It should be like what they mean by that, like this. Is, and uh, I mean is that your, your movements are not static and they're not flat, because when a, when an athlete has nervous energy, right, and he is trying to get himself up for performance and he's trying to counteract what's happening within his own self, what you need to do is you need to wake in his senses. You need to have him alert. And there's no good doing flat stretching, like. Right? sitting down on the ground before a match and so it's up the field and it is a great summer's evening and next minute you see your full forward or key men in here because he, he, you know it's Sunday evening he's like he's falling asleep what you need him is you need him up and you need players to be alert you need their peripheral vision working you need them to be getting really in tune at that stage of the warm up and then the very last thing there is match pace that's where you might take a few runs at high pace or you might have some drill yourself that you like where the players are all out. Last Sunday, Blown Casement, I played a game. We played uh, with 24, we played uh, 11 on 11. Non uh, contact, man marking man, that was the instruction. Uh, fast movement of the ball. But what that game did below there last uh, Sunday was it got fellas alert to what was coming in the next 10 minutes as well. It got them up to match pace, we'll say. But as I said to you, last Sunday was a conditioning warm up. You know, down in Clare next week will be the same again. We'll be doing a conditioning warm up because that's the phase I'm at at the moment. 
but yet we'll still be very competitive down in Clare next Sunday, as we were last week inside in Casement. Any questions there on this stage, lads? Anyone? Does not. Anyone have to say? Huh? Charlie, you haven't mentioned hydration on this, this warm-up at all. Yeah, see, like, see, hydration is a myth, right, I believe, right? If the player comes to the field, if a player comes to you to the game, right, on the game, game, and he hasn't drank water for two days, right? Like, I'm even starting to dehydrate, you know. But if a player hasn't drank water for two days, and he comes to the field, and you have 12 water bottles here, and another 12 water bottles here, and all of a sudden you see a player go for the wrong water, right? First of all, you're in a serious problem. You're, you have a problem straight away. And why do you have a problem, lads? What? Yeah. But what's, what's a human body made up of, lads? Percentage water. Come on, lads, on college here around you, you know. Huh? <coughs> what? 70-80% of your body is water, right? Okay? But because we're Irish, lads, right, and we go out, look, it's a bit cloudy out here today, right, and there's a bit of rain falling, what do the Irish do? Osmosis. We'll absorb it in after water, you know. It'll hit our skin and it'll come in and we'll be hydrated, yeah? That's what happens, right? That's the Irish way, right? Lashing rain. We'll go to any train session in Ireland, lashing rain on it, any, any Tuesday night, Thursday night, and there'll be no water over the field. Because by God, the guys will be out, they'll be running to the ground tonight, and their tongues will be out, and they'll be getting the water as far as more water over it. You know? Not good enough. If an athlete comes to you and he ain't hydrated properly, even if he's an underage player, I would say this to you, his performance will diminish by about 15% because he's already in a dehydrated state. So what I'm saying is if, if your body's made up of between 70 and 80% of water and you're down say 20%, so you're back down to we'll say 50, 60%, you've got an athlete that ain't going to be as good as he should be. And how many times do you see that with your good players in your club? Say your underage players. They're brilliant sometime and then another night they're very, they're very tired or they're very lethargic. The reason is because they're not hydrated. Now I will say this, water is the best form of hydration. I don't know about any of you, but before I ever competed, I used to get very, very nervous. Right? And there's no man in this room shouldn't be sheepish enough now to say that you don't get nervous before a game. Okay, you learn to work off your opponent's weaknesses and his nervousness, yeah. But any man that has ever played a game at any level gets a little bit heightened before a game. Sweaty pans, underarms sweat a lot more, body starts to perspire, etc. Now what happens here is this, you take any of those products that are highly concentrated and you induce them into yourself in the run into the game. So we're down in the dressing room, we're in the dressing room here now, we're getting ready to go up there. And a couple of us have the dry mouth syndrome like I have right now. So I go down a bottle of say, orange, those orange products, right? Or any of the other. What happens is, yeah, I feel instantly, I feel fine. But six or seven minutes later, when I go up there, I'm back to square one again. Because the concentration level is too high in the bottle of the fluid. And what happens when you're nervous is this. If you induce food stuff into your body and the timing is wrong, what will happen when you go to the field, lads? Do you ever hear of getting your second wind? You don't get it. The reason you don't get it is this. It's because the blood you need to go up, that goes out here to the outer extremities of your arms, down to your fingers, down to your toes, for to carry oxygen around your system is going where? Huh? Stomach. For what purpose? To digest what you've just taken in. Because of the concentration of carbohydrate and so forth inside in the loops, inside the products, it's gone in here. So instead of you getting your movement of circulation is it's been dragged in here because you're nervous and you've got heightened anxiety about the body. Smart things it's smart. Very, very important point. What I would say is that to wean guys off because they're so used to it now, you have them, we go half and half. We did blown cocks and stuff too. We used to have we were, as a weird guy and he used to when the bottles and blue stuff come in, we poured half out into another bottle, half up, half water and water. We used to go down to that scientific down that much. But for you yourselves guys, you know they, they do serve a product, they do serve a purpose, but they're not, they're not the answer. I believe myself that uh, the milk is the best. I, would, you know, I believe it's a good glass of milk after training, good glass of milk after you know, a match. You know, and I mean, if you want to step it on into you know, protein with the milk, yeah. But I've always believed, like, you know, if you look at the Glydactics Index, you've all heard that in nutrition.